to find the eccentricity of a conic section, then you should be able to write the equation of the conic section given the eccentricity with any of the elements, either a focus or the vertices. So let me demonstrate number one, the easier one, and you could try the more spicier one, number two. So number one, here's what we have. It says it's an ellipse. So if it's an ellipse, we're looking for eccentricity that's going to be between 0 and 1, and there it is. First, let me graph this guy. So the coordinate for one of the fo foci is 2 and negative 4. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is a focus at 2 and negative 4. The other one is 2 and positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 over here. So 2 and 4. So the vertex is on the outside of that. And the eccentricity is at 0.5. So the eccentricity for an ellipse, the rule was E is equal to C over A. And I need to find what the C and the A is, and as well as the B, so I can write the standard form. Well, the E is given to you as 0.5. So that's 0.5 is equal to the focus. Well, the distance from the center of this ellipse to the focus is 1, 2, 3, 4. So the C is 4. And the A is what we do not know. So we're going to look for that. So we're going to solve for A. So let's move that A over by multiplying A to all terms. So as a result, we get 0.5A is equal to 4. Now we're going to solve for A by getting rid of the coefficient 0.5. Therefore, A is now 8. So I found the A. A is the distance from the center to the vertex, and it's 8 units away. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, way out here. So that's the vertex. So the other side is true, plus or minus. 5, 6, 7, 8. So this one's 2 and negative 8. Those are the vertices now. Now I also need to find the B the co-vertex to give me the picture of the ellipse. To find that, well remember, in an ellipse, to find the focus, the formula is c squared is equal to a squared minus the b squared. I have the a, I have the c, which is the focus, which is four units, I need to look for the b. So let's solve for that by moving the b to the left side of the equation, and at the same time move the c to the right side, so we end up with b squared is equal to a squared minus c squared. And I'm going to solve for b. And we're going to square root both sides of the equation. And let's just go ahead and substitute the a squared with 8 squared. So that's 64. And c squared is 4 squared. So that's 16. So b, in fact, becomes a square root of 48. And 48 is like saying 3 times 16. So square root of 16 comes out as a 4, and 3 stays inside. So that's the B. I have the A, I have the B, and I have the C as the 4 units from the center to the focus. So I have my A, B, and C. So B is 4 square root of 3. What is 4 square root of 3? Well, it's 4 times square root of 3, and that's about 6.928. So 6.93 above. 6.93. From here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 6.93 is like over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 6.93 is right over there. So I'm going to make a S, kind of a sketch it out. So I get a picture of what it's supposed to look like. Bad ellipse. But you got the idea. And the line of symmetry is going to be along x is equal to positive 2 and y is equal to zero. There it is. So it's a vertical major axis. And because of vertical major axis, the, the standard form, if it was a center, it would have been x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared is equal to one. But it's trans translated over to the two units, so it's x minus two squared. And what's my b? It was four squared of three. So four squared of three squared plus y squared 
the y has not been translated, so it's a zero. So it's just y squared. And the a is going to be 8 squared, which is 64, equals 1. And what is uh, 4 squared of 3 squared? That's 16 times the 3 is 48. So the final equation is going to be x minus 2 squared over 48 plus y squared over 64 equals 1. There's my standard form of the equation for this ellipse that's been translated over to two units to the right. Given this eccentricity, if you move that up, there it is. Okay? Now I want to try number two. All right. Now, if you figure this one out, you are awesome because this number two happens to be very, very spicy. I give it two chili peppers. Yeah! <laughs> Here's what we got. If you remember the rule, going to back to my green little reference paper, the rule was if you have any lips, then the uh, eccentricity is defined as the ratio between the focus, the distance from the middle to the focus, over the distance from the middle to the vertex, C over A where the eccentricity is less than one but greater than zero, it's a quotient. But if we have a hyperbola, the setup is the same way, eccentricity is the quotient or the ratio of C over A, but the E is gonna be greater than one as given over here. So that's what we're given. So this is the thing we have to remember, okay? So here what we have, we're going to find out what the components A, B, and the C's are given this information. So let's write that down over here. So we want the eccentricity is equal to C over A. From that point on, we're gonna try to write this in standard form. All right? So in order to do that, let me picture this. Get a picture of what this hyperbola is sort of supposed to look like. The corner is negative 10 and four. So on the left side, negative 10 and four. There it is. And negative two and four, right there. So those are vertices. So obviously it's going to be a horizontal transverse axis. It's horizontal. Okay, that means my hyperbolas on either side is gonna go left to right. And somewhere inside somewhere is gonna be my foci. So I have to look for that on the other side as well. And I have to look for my co-vertices, the B. Okay? So to find that, we're going to use this setup. The eccentricity is equal to the ratio of C over A, C and A. So let's do that over here. So E has already been defined to you as 2.4. So 2.4 is equal to the focus, which we do not know, but we know the distance from the center to the vertex because look, this is negative two. And look, this is negative 10. If you wanted to insist, you could find a midpoint to find the distance between those two. And we could tell it's gonna be four units in, four units in, it's gonna be negative six. Negative six and four is the actual center of this hyperbola. But if you did not know that, you would go the midpoint formula. Remember? Is when you take, when you add the two x coordinates and divide it by two and take the two y coordinates divided by two. That gives you the midpoint. So in this case, it would have been negative 10 plus negative two over two, uh, over two, and four plus four over two. And if you evaluate, that becomes negative 12 over two, which is negative six. And that becomes eight over two, which is four. And in this case, you could have seen that visually. So that's the midpoint. Yeah, so, so what is the distance from the center midpoint to the vertex? What's well, four units away? Okay, and if you did not know that either, you would have used the formula distance formula, which is a square root of the x of two minus x of one squared plus y sub two minus y sub one squared. So in this case, what you want to do is take the center, the midpoint, and take any one of those vertices and find the distance. So let's take the first one since I'm already here. It would have been negative 10 minus negative six, which is plus six, and I'm gonna take a square of that, plus y sub two, which is four, minus that four, which will become zero. And we're gonna square root that result. 
In this case, we get negative 4 squared, which is 16. And that's a 0. That's gone. So square root of 16 is simply 4. So we know the distance from the center to the first vertices either way is 4 units away, as defined by the distance formula. There it is. Okay? So A is 4 vertex. Distance from the center to the vertex. The B is what we do not know. The C is... Where is the C? Oh, well. <laughs> here we are. We know what the A is, so let's put that here. Let's find the C now. There we go. We don't know that either. There we go. So to solve for C, we're going to multiply to both sides of the equation by that A, which is 4. So that one cancels out. So C, in fact, equals 4 times 2.4 is, what is that, 9.6? There we go. So the focus is 9.6 units away from the center, way over there somewhere, and way over there somewhere. I don't know. Okay? So I got the A. I got the C. I need the B now. To find the B, remember, for hyperbola, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So now I'm going to solve for B. So I'm going to move the A over so we get B is equal to square root of C squared minus A squared. So that square root of well, C, we said it was 9.6. Was 9.6 squared? I need a calculator for that. 9.6 squared is going to be 92.16 minus the A squared is 16. So 92.16 minus 16 is going to be 76.16 square rooted. Whatever it is, that's my B. Found it. So I have my A, I have my B, and I have my C. So now I can write the standard form. Standard form for hyperbola is, this is horizontal transverse axis, so x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. Has this been translated from the origin? It has. How many units away from the, on the x? It seems like 6 units away. So it's going to be x plus, because it's the inverse, h, a, x minus h, right? Square minus, has this been translated from the x-axis to the, on the, along the y-axis? Yes. How many units? Four units away. Uh, but it's going to be positive, so the inverse is uh, the y minus the 4 square. And the a is going to be 4, so that's what? A squared is 16, and B is a radical, but squared, it's, so we get 76.16. And this, as ugly as it is, is a standard form of, which represents this hyperbola given this eccentricity.